Okay, so a Lin Maya system or a system is a string replacement algorithm that that has a starting point that acts in and rules that determines which characters will be replaced by what strings. So if you look here, we have the starting string A. Our rules is that A will become AB and B becomes A. So by iterating through and replacing each character with a representing string, we end up with a series of recursive characters. Now while this to set up this here is that we have our starting string, our rules and our current strings. I also have text boxes so I can actually display the strings. So to check it, our rules is in it's a dictionary and that the character is the character and the string is what we're going to be replacing the character with. So, and then we have a start which is such such the variables and text boxes kind of in a generation. So we're going to be burdening a new string. So we have a string burden which starts off empty. Then we go through the string, our current string, we look at the character and we see if it's in the rules. If it's in the rules we add the value to the string burden. If it's not in the rules, we just add the character and then we convert it back, which is simply replacing our strings with the characters and strings. So while this alone is not much, what you can do is create recursive patterns using this. So we have this is called the Cozy Snowflake. There's a link in the description. And what it states is that if you have a triangle and replace each lines with this system, with this curve, you end up with a snowflake. And what you can do is use an AI system to describe this. So the triangle is the axiom and the curve is ultimately the rule of replacement. So to do this, what we need is to actually, just like with our uh, system we have rules and we have we got a string we replace it just like the same but in our rules we give each character a meaning so f would become move forwards and plus and minus are rotate on the axis which i have the card over here the values in addition to this what we need is to store the position of each lines so that we can actually draw the snowflake lines. So what we have is in the start, we set up all our variables and rules, then we start a coroutine. So this coroutine will loop through and generate our system the amount of times we like. And then it will then once we have the strings, we end up following the rules. And the rules is that F equals move. So we store its position, we then move, then store the new position. So we end up with a series of positions. Now lines is a list of vectors and, it, and rotate is as we rotate, we're rotating on the y angle by a set amount. So what ends up happening is that we go, we end up drawing this triangle and you can see in addition there are other shapes and factual patterns that can be described by using an air system. In addition to mathematical patterns, you can create trees using an air system. So to do this, we kind of need more things. So we have a tree over here that's rotated. A tree is essentially is it branches off like this. So what we have for a tree is our variables. So start at the top we have variables. So we've got the number of times we run in the iteration. Our starting point, this is going to be just the main branch. Now as a tree grows, so go up a tree the like lines 
a frequency decrease, which is by this amount. We got angles, and we even have some randomness in our angles to give our trees more uniqueness and randomize. Starting leather trees, we got rules. Then got some materials for the branches and of course the leaves that we'll be doing separate. Then over here, we got branches. So we got a list of lines. So a line is a starting position and end position. So we are storing essentially all the lines for the branches and leaves individually. And we got the kind of thing. So just like with our snowflake, we set up the variables and we start the coding. So the coding looks like this. We loop, create the our system and replace all the strings and then we follow the command and we draw our tree. So in now our drawing is up here. No it's not, where's that draw draw a line. So we just loop through each of the lines and draws which ends up being drawing our tree and anyway, the walls. So our walls are the same. It says instead of storing individual factors, we store a line, which is basically pretty much similar. And we also check out to the length. And rotation is fine, it's just we're using random now as more variety. And in addition, we have rotations on other axes to give our tree more depth and make it 3D. Now what's neat is the walls. So as you can see there's more things. So we got a rotation on F axis but we also have these. So the brackets suddenly creates a branch in the system. I mean because as you can see what's happening is we're moving forwards, we're rotating. Then we're branching, and then we're going to be rotating, moving forward. So we have a main tree, which is slightly rotating, but then we have our branch. As you can see, branches like this. And these branches ultimately follow this pattern, with each of the branches being identical. So, and if we would like to create more branches, we can just add more here. Minus star minus f. So this will create us more branches on different in different positions. Or it just breaks. Why? Saved it, so why does it break? Oh, no, because you can't see it, that's why. So probably move this, now we can see it better. So, end up with branches on our tree. Now to create a branch, you need to store the current position, the well, just store its current position, rotation, and the length that we're carrying it on. So we have a strap to store that information, and we have a stack. So what is is that when we end up creating a branch, we end up so we just store its current position and its length, and then we go back to the previous position and that will create the branch and systems. Now one thing with this tree is that well they have leaves. So to add leaves we can use uh, as a nether wall. So just like we do with our branches, we create a line, we move forwards, we add it to a list and then we ultimately get smaller. And that's what L stands for. So what this does is creates a leaves that has two branching paths of different rotations. So to add a leaf, we need to add it into our system. So a leaf is a branch 
and we can add them here. So this represents the end of a branch. So our leaves will always be on the end. What ends up happening is that we end up having leaves. Takes a while. So as you can see, we now have leaves and they're always on the end of the branch. And if you look at a leaf, you can see that a A leaf is a straight line. Yes, it should be two different axes. Like a star here. So a star. So as you can see, we have two leaves. And these leaves are just branches. I mean, we end up with a tree. So, so we care system, we follow the rules, we end up with a series of positions, and then we just draw each positions. Now, what you can do with this is that if I go forest, yep, just unhide this, is that this system has but by using the systems you can end up creating a variety of different trees so you got you have this tree you get um, where's my system so well so we end up with different trees This tree, I don't know what's happening. I need to get rid of this because we don't want more skeletons. So it's a low. So we end up with different trees, and each of these trees is ultimately formed by the variables that are set. So I see it. We get number of times, the starting, the length, and ultimately the rules. So what I've done is I've made a variable to so that we can actually set different kind of trees and the variables of our forest is here. So we just end up creating trees with these variables. And we can change these variables to create different trees. Now the last thing I'll show you is to actually well, make your tree actually part of the game. So currently we're drawing lines and we can't really do anything with these lines. So one solution is to turn the lines into game objects, that being a line renderer, which are these two here. But so what we're doing, we're placing each line with a line renderer. The problem with this is that you're going to end up having a lot of lines and ultimately a lot of objects, which is extremely laggy and not ideal. Now, one thing, another solution is to to use your data to create a mesh. Now, this is rather complicated, and I have left a link to a solution that I found. It's not perfect, but it's this part here. So what happens with this mesh, that if I just show you, in generation, and create, so we generate mesh, end up, you end up with a mesh, and each mesh can have different materials and length, I mean this tree is better, which, I mean, it's good, but mesh generation is rather complex. But yes, you can also me just create trees and cross over leaves and fats or passants. Yeah, that is it.